Math 083 Final Exam Review Problem 24 Parts C and D In Problem 24, we must solve each equation by the method of completing the square. When I teach this method to my class, I suggest an opening move, which might not be the same as explained in the textbook, but it's just a small variation on the textbook's explanation for the method. My suggestion is to isolate the constant term. The constant term is the term with no variable multiplied to it. My suggestion is to push that to one side of the equal sign. Here, we would accomplish this by adding 84 to both sides. We get 3x squared minus 12x equals 84. The next thing you want to do is check the value of a. a is the coefficient of x squared, and here a is 3. Since a is not 1, we're going to divide every single term on both sides of the equation by 3. So, since a is not equal to 1, we will divide all terms by a. We get x squared minus 4x equals 28. These two steps, which are sometimes necessary, sometimes not, set up the method of completing the square. Here's where we get to the heart of this method. We look at the value of b. b is negative 4. And what we have to do is take half of b and square that and then add that amount to both sides of the equation. Now half of b is half of negative 4, that's negative 2, and we will square negative 2 and add that to both sides of the equation. So we will add 4 to both sides of the equation. Now the left side of the equation factors, and we could use the AC method to factor turns out to be x minus 2 times x minus 2, and it's no coincidence that we have a repeated factor, a square, in fact. We have x minus 2, quantity squared, and then on the right side, 32. Notice that this minus 2 here is half of b, and that's always the case by our construction. So we have x minus 2 squared equals 32. At this point, our next step is to apply the square root to both sides of the equation. When we apply a square root or any even root, we have to write plus or minus. The left-hand side, we have x minus 2. The right-hand side, we have plus or minus, positive or negative, square root of 32. Now let's work on the square root of 32 over here. That is a square root of 16 times the square root of 2, which is 4 square root of 2. So we have x minus 2 equals positive or negative 4 square root of 2. We add 2 to both sides of the equation, but the 2 is not a like term with this 4 square root of 2, so all we can write is x equals 2 plus or minus 4 square root of 2. Again, this is not 6 square root of 2 or negative 2 square root of 2. It's an answer with two separate terms. And in fact, there are two answers here. x equals 2 minus 4 square root of 2. x equals 2 plus 4 square root of 2. Now let's go on to part D. As I did in part C, I'm going to stick with my opening move, which is to isolate the constant term. I will subtract 4 from both sides. x squared minus 9x equals x minus 29. I also need to push the x term over to the left by subtracting. We have x squared minus 10x equals negative 29. Now we are ready to complete the square. We look at b. b is negative 10. Half of b squared is negative 5 squared, which is 25. And this amount, 25, we add to both sides of the equation. The left-hand side factors as x minus 5, x minus 5. Again, that is a squared quantity, and that which follows the x is the half of b value, the negative 5. We have x minus 5 squared equals negative 4. Here is where we apply the square root to both sides, writing plus or minus. On the left hand side we have x minus 5. On the right hand side we have positive or negative 2i. Recall since the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of negative 4 is 2i. We can add 5 to both sides of the equation, but the right hand side does not have like terms. We have 5 plus or minus 2i. You do not get 7i. You do not get 3i. We have two solutions. x equals 5 plus 2i. 
and x equals 5 minus 2i.